No career here. I'll be gone in like a year. Uh, that, all this <laughs> I don't think he'll be gone in a year. Love or hate him, there is no in between. Nikhil Arcot, or better known as Nick Airball, is a supposed investment banker turned high stakes cash game regular on popular poker stream Hustler Casino Live. Besides being a very polarizing personality, Nick Airball is also quite unique in the way that no one really knows much about him. His past is unclear, leaving many poker fans to wonder, who is this young guy? Where did he come from? And what is his mysterious source of cash? In this video, we will cover all of that and more, including his many wild appearances on HCL and the feuds both on and off the felt, one of which ended up costing him over $1 million to finally what his future in poker really looks like. Before Nick was the self-proclaimed king of LA, he attended college at New York University, Shanghai, that's in China, receiving a bachelor's of science degree in business and finance with a minor in political science. His LinkedIn shows he was even the captain of the basketball team. I did not expect him to be a literal baller. Through some more research, it looks like Nick's first real job was actually at the convenience store Rite Aid as a cashier for just a month. That is quite the hourly difference between then and now. BrokerCheck, a search engine and government authorized nonprofit site designed to make sure financial professionals and firms are legit, has Nick Airball listed, confirming several different investment banking jobs. So at least on paper, his story does check out. Here he can be seen making his first appearance on YouTube, not in a huge poker hand, but rather an accounting project video for school. Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and for my final project, I decided to look at three questions. Which has since been a fun spot for trolls to revisit. Nick speaks Mandarin, which makes some sense considering his time spent in China for school. We often see this on full display while he's on stream. Okay, so... Despite the amount of heat he gets, for better or worse, his level of fluency is pretty impressive. Although many may not want to admit it, Nick is a smart cookie. Regardless of his serious educational and professional background, Nick's demeanor at the poker table is often quite out of line. Life is good! Oh boy. Whoa. Give me oh. all the chips. Does That's this not count the for the heads up match or what's going on? Yeah, I want all the chips. <laughs> I think he's gonna. Is want anybody punch this guy in the face in a home game? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, he looks like he's got it coming. <laughs> you have to give him the chips. Oh man! Oh man! Come on! My chip. <laughs> oh, Whoa! Oh, I, I want to get in that room right now. Keep playing. Wow. Is it mining, Jennifer? Get this kid is hammered. I mean, he's really, well, he's shot. Yeah, he's not driving home, right? AJ, look at this guy. Can we get some chaps to get the table? <laughs> In this particular instance, he is seen getting hammered, burping, yelling, tanking, and more, sparking mixed reactions. Many fans felt such behavior was bad for poker, fearing it damages the game's reputation. Others appreciated the realism, arguing that poker isn't always a gentleman's game and that Nick's unfiltered personality adds a layer of authenticity to the stream. It is not totally clear where he is originally from, as he has spent time in Oregon, New York, and California. California. It looks like New York is the most likely as he has said this several times. There, he has worked in various general investment banking roles with Oregon being his location when younger. He once lived in Los Angeles and somewhat recently in March of 2022 moved back. This is where he remains today. Despite his high roller lifestyle often flexing on Instagram and traveling by private jets for comfort and speed, Nick Airball has an interesting preference for traveling by Uber instead, opting for them more often when going back and forth between Los Angeles to Las Vegas. In LA, he had his dream job at an aerospace and defense investment banking company called KAL Capital. I moved to a bank in LA that uh, focused on aerospace and defense. So like like guns and like sh cool shit. And like we're selling defense contractors. It was like my dream banking job. He was very happy to come back to LA as that meant he could play more poker. But as he details here, inevitably ended up having to choose between the two. I had to make a decision on what I valued more and what I wanted to continue to do with my time. And at the time I was much more enamored with like poker than I was with my job. And so I chose to focus or just step away from the job. Did they give you an ultimatum, essentially? More on Garrett Adelstein's role in this later. Since Nick Airball started playing on HCL, he has been questioned on where his money has come from. People see a young 20 something kid winning and losing hundreds of thousands of dollars on stream and understandably, they have questions and they want answers. Many poker fans and stream viewers regularly make less than friendly assumptions. The biggest one probably being that he has rich parents, a trust fund, or that he has been given the money in some form or fashion. Some have speculated even being staked by fellow wealthy regs like Blank Check Ben. He is an investment banker, but he, he makes way more money from oh, poker than oh. he makes 
from investment. Here is the only public instance I found where we actually get an estimation of Nick Airball's bankroll. I don't know what your bankroll is. I'm just telling you, like, it seems like unless you have a, I, I, I just don't, I can't buy that you have a bankroll, had a bankroll of like 20, 30 million. Would I be right saying that? No, but, you know, it's, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been significant. This could be interpreted a lot of different ways, but to me, it seems like Nick Airball is saying he has more than 20 or 30 million. This is for sure possible, and it could even be higher considering how big he plays. Maybe he even hit it big in crypto like his friend Westside Wesley, or the least believed theory, but still possible, is that he had a lot of money to begin with as an investment banker, which enabled him to snowball that into continuous winnings quickly moving up to the highest of stakes that we often see him playing in today. Just not in this guy's game who was best friends with him, who ended up cheating him for over a million dollars, but that's for another video. And people question like, how did he come up? There's so much that the, that the people don't see, like the games go after stream. Nick was the biggest winner. You were the big, how the fuck, there's a lot of variance in poker. <laughs> you were the biggest winner post stream <laughs> and you were doing well on stream as well. When asked about his bankroll, Nick for the longest time didn't want to answer any questions or speak on it or he always kept it vague. I, I don't know, do you have any interest in talking about your bankroll, um, how you built it, where it's at, what percentage you lost, anything like that? Bankroll stuff, not too interested about talking about. As he became more famous and known, he was questioned more and more. Did you get make your money from poker, do you want to say, or did you do something else? I'm basically just doing nothing slash playing poker, making content, whatever you, so whatever you want to call that, but they should have my job, of poker, of some other like public stock market investments, like uh, I've just like run really hot in some good spots, whether that be like my work in poker or in investing. I also like to troll everyone with how I made the money and stuff, and I think it's funny. Let's be honest, it is likely Nick's wealth isn't solely from poker. He is always uncomfortable with this topic, and his earlier wins were modest compared to his current ones. Here he describes meeting Ryan Feldman, the owner of Hustle Casino Live and the Game Runner for the very first time. For me personally, like this probably just to sound like ludicrously, like I guess just like self-righteous or something, but like I guess I've never really played in public games. But it's not like I showed up in LA and I knew everyone. I just showed up in LA, went to a public game, made the game good, and was immediately pulled into a private game. Yes, this is normal, but continue. Like the way I met Ryan Feldman, for example, is this. We were playing five five. So I get to the hustle or to the bike, this is years ago, I was in college, and uh there's a five-five game running. So I go to get a seat in the game. Okay, he's in college playing five-five. Those stakes aren't huge. And the game's boring, so I convince everyone to do half PLO, half no limit. By the end of the night, it's like eight in the morning. I'm falling out of my chair multiple times drunk. I'm stuck like 20,000 and we're playing 40, 80 PLO. What? Now this is where Airball kind of outs himself. I don't know about you guys, but I did not have 20K in college to lose in one night. Also, remember at this point in his life, he probably doesn't even have his main investment banking jobs. So double what? And like everyone else is winning. <laughs> like, you know, like it's not a big loss for the game, but it's just like, that's how like, you, you like, I mean, I'm not saying like, I'm not saying I went in there trying to torch money, but like, I was just like trying to make the game better and I happened to get caught in the crossfire, that's fine. But like, no, Nick, you weren't caught in the crossfire. You were the crossfire. In tonight's surprising news, a drunk man seen gambling away tens of thousands of dollars has been warmly welcomed into exclusive private games. Why? Because he is just a real joy to play with. All jokes aside, this seems pretty obvious to most people, but Nick seems to really think of himself as a legitimately skilled and winning poker player. I mean, at a time, he started a YouTube channel with these goofballs breaking down hands that he has played on stream. He's got some people other than himself fooled like Ben here. Once again, you know, poker isn't my job. I, I'm not a professional poker player. Um, Would you consider Nick one? Yes. How so? He is, he, he, he plays for a living. I know yeah. how well investment bankers are compensated. That provided him with mm -hmm. the foundations yeah. for a poker bankroll. Sure. The rest of it, he won. But I think this is one of the biggest reasons he gets so much hate. Whereas others like Alan Keating are also clearly playing to have fun and gamble, very uncaring of the results, Nick is often so proud, cocky, and smug with no reason to back it up. While he navigates the world of nosebleed stakes, his wife's night shifts as a nurse also offers a stark contrast, drawing mixed views from fans who see their relationship through a lens of unfairness or pity. Who knows, to them, this might be a version of a well-balanced life. So wait, you, you're not tilted about money, meaning you don't think that you could have bought a house with that money. You ben. don't think that- No, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I, no this is serious. No, I thought about that. Like yeah. this morning, my wife and I went and looked at houses because we're going to buy a house soon. I was mm -hmm. like, 
man, that's 744K could have been, you know, <laughs> could have bought a little bigger house. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the public eye, Nick's persona is a far cry from the ordinary. Here he is first appearing on HCL on February 1st, 2022. Actually just going by Nick A. He was similar to how we know him now, very vocal and confident from day one. That said, we certainly saw a tighter side. I mean, look at that V-pip in preflop race. He seemed to play a more passive poker style, like this hand where on just his fifth ever show appearance, he actually ends up folding a full house to an insane bluff from Rampage. He later responded to a lot of pushback and questions on this. People wondered how can he go from folding full houses to his insane bluff heavy style we see him play today. Well, he folded that that full house to Rampage. He must have been scared money. I mean, he leveled you. Yeah, like intentionally or not. I mean, I think I kind of leveled myself. I don't think he's bluffing. I don't have more chips. If I get stacked here, like the game's gonna probably break, like, right. let's just, like, fold and keep playing or whatever, you know? As he appeared more, he started to play in bigger and bigger games, even winning HCL's largest pot ever at the time for $870,000 for his young gun button clicker, who he did not go easy on. Brick and Nick Airball wins an $870,000 pot off of button clicker, flopping a straight in a three-bet pot against top set. Best online no limit hold'em player in the world, like whatever craziness. <laughs> and I was like, man, we gotta just send him on his bike, JR. Like, we got to, you know, and we did. This is what you could call Nick Airball in his prime. He won a lot, nearing an $800,000 upswing, resulting in his confidence being at an all time high. But as we know, every high must come down. Recently, Nick Airball revealed he was on an $8 million downswing. You're on a bit of a downswing, huh? Mm hmm. Like, depends on how you look at it, but like, I would say it's like, you know, around 8 million. 8 million. Even after this, Nick has continued to lose, honestly, looking quite depressed on many of the streams he's played on. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Nick's confrontations and flashy lifestyle on the felt are just one side of his story. He shares how good times and bad times show who your friends really are. When you want a big rise and then like a big public like fall or whatever, like I feel like you find out like who your friends are. Through this, when you were uh, when you were sun running and you were up millions and millions of dollars and kind of all, going all around pimping around, you had more of a an entourage. You had people that wanted to hang, and then when things started going south, they they distanced themselves. I mean, is that a true statement? Really? Yeah, something like that. This is common in poker, where big players like him attract many people who are more interested in his money than real friendship. One has to feel bad for the guy at least a little bit, but some might just say he's gotten what he deserves, as he has chosen to have this villain-esque element to him and his reputation. It wasn't always antagonistic between Nick and the poker community, but when a boastful guy like him is no longer winning, it is very easy to pile on. Add this strange timeline and mystique to the mix where his threshold for winning and losing money goes up and down faster than a roller coaster, you've got a lot of attention, much of which is not so nice. Before the Jack 4 off cheating scandal with Garrett Adelstein versus Robbie J. Lou, people also tuned in to see what ridiculous and entertaining hands he would play next with Garrett and others. Maybe him and Garrett didn't love each other, but Nick once shared a friendly rapport with Garrett, often playing with him on HCL. Garrett was even someone he admired admired and liked at a time. But this all changed when Garrett insinuated Nick Airball could have been possibly involved with what he believed to be cheating at HCL. This led to Nick getting in trouble with his job as people were actually reaching out to the company and calling Nick a cheater. The poker community is pretty fucking nasty. That's what I can say. It was only after the Jack 4 incident and like my name being brought up unfairly or whatever like that. Uh, I had to leave that position. People found, like, my link, I have LinkedIn, like, people have posted on Twitter and stuff, and, like, it's not hard to figure out where I worked. People just started text emailing the, the info at whatever. Wow. And, like, that goes straight to, like, that's so the owner or whatever. Nick was given an ultimatum between his job and poker. He, of course, chose poker and has been unemployed since October of 2022. Nick was upset about this, as well as the attacks on HCL, leading him to challenge Garrett to a heads up match for roles. Garrett ignored all of this while he fought for himself versus Robbie. In the meantime, another well known poker personality, Matt Perky, had a lot of criticism for HCL and still does 
on game security and more. This led to Nick calling Berkey a scammer for the poker coaching courses he sells. After more trash talk back and forth, Nick thought it was a good idea to challenge Berkey in a high stakes heads up match for roles. Well, this time Berkey actually accepted. After the two nearly got in a fight in Ivy's room at the Bellagio, <laughs> They sat down in a heated heads up match at Resorts World in Las Vegas for just over a week. 60 hours over the course of 10 days, where Airball ended up walking out with his head down and tail between his legs, losing over $1 million versus Berkey. For the first time ever, we basically saw Nick get humbled. He went into the match thinking he had a great chance of winning. He even had the support from one of the best heads up experts in the world. World, Doug Polk, but couldn't get the job done. He took to Twitter with a long post where he actually apologized to Berkey and showed a side of himself that we had never really seen before. This got a lot of respect from fans and led many to question if Nick is truly an asshole as he may often come across or is it all just for show. Understandably, Nick appears arrogant to many poker fans. He flaunts his wealth and has a laugh that has been described as cackling by poker's best like Daniel Negreanu. As discussed before he became a well-known regular on Hustle Casino Live, Nick Airball was totally unknown. His initial appearances on HCL were his first steps into the limelight of poker streaming. He made his feuds with Garrett and Berkey personal, talking smack to levels of insult. Here in his early days and hardly known at this point, Nick doesn't hold back, verbally attacking Garrett. Garrett's the biggest nit in LA and he's my bitch. I'm the LA poker boss. And so, you know how I know that, Joey? How? How do you because know I'll that? I'll play anyone. I'll play him. I'll play uh -huh. Andrew Robo. I'll play any Limitless. Any of those fucking online idiots who think they have a shot? Uh -huh. Come play me live, and we'll see who wins. The tension escalated when Garrett called out Nick's character in this infamous tweet, saying, quote, PC Garrett has died. Airball is a bad poker player and a much worse human being. Fuck that guy. This moment exemplifies the bitter rivalry that's as much about the clash of personalities as it is about the cards on the table. Following this exposure, he expanded his presence by playing on other streams, including The Lodge in Texas, Poker Go, and Bally's. At The Lodge, he would butt heads once again, this time with legend Dan Cates, aka Jungle Man. In this heated exchange, Nick not only takes the pot, but also takes a jab at Jungle, calling him his bitch more than once. I think I know what this guy's favorite insult is. We are coming down to the wire here, probably about 10 seconds left. Lays it down! Lays wow. it down! Wow, he's getting shown the bluff 100%. <laughs> You're my bitch. Don't oh. forget. Wow. You're my bitch was just Fucking uttered. Easy poker, Johnny. Oh, semi. Semi. Ship it! Semi, semi oh. binding. Semi. We Such got dirty cool Dan again. Too. No. Snap call with the 2x. You should fold. That's an easy fold. Oh my god. Says the idiot uh, called a queen. You're that kind of. Oh, oh my god. Now we have. Now we have an issue. No way that just happened. <laughs> As you can see from these YouTube comments, the incident agitated many fans who felt it crossed the line of competitive banner. Interestingly, the players themselves, including Jungle, didn't take the trash talk to heart, demonstrating the thick skin needed in high stakes poker. Jungle Man likes you, even though you're calling him a bitch and whatever, <laughs> I love but them. he loves it, right? Yeah, of course. To me, Nick seems like a genuine guy that means well. Say what you want about me. I'm loud, I'm annoying, I'm obnoxious, arrogant, I'm an asshole, whatever, right? But I think I'm like a pretty good person. And like, I think I do things in poker the right way, you know? But it's possibly gone a bit too far in some spots, losing the respect from potential fans that could have been won over. Remember, all we see is Nick on camera. Maybe he is misunderstood and his public demeanor does not accurately represent him to the fullest. It is also possible that if Nick won more than he lost, he would have more fans for his antics. Either that, or he is just generally annoying to many people. That's also possible. What Ben says here is true. He's the Conor McGregor of poker. The only difference is that Conor McGregor could actually back up everything he said. Well, until a point, that is. He's the best round of artist in the sport. So just like McGregor, will Nick continue to take the beatdowns or will he look to come back stronger than ever? From Nick A to Nikhil Arcot to finally his final form, Nick Airball. He is one of a kind, standing out as one of poker's most controversial figures to date. Like others, will Nick Airball's time in poker be short-lived 
or will it stand strong? Airball himself appears quite self-aware about his unpredictable journey, indicating he'll simply follow wherever his instincts lead him. Do you have a poker goal? Like, you, what? Do you, how do you see this mm. 20 years from now? Like, what's your goal? Who do you want to be? I don't care what my quote unquote, like the memory of me is or legacy or whatever in poker is. To me, it's just, it's been fun for me. And it's been about like what I, what I've got taken away from it rather than necessarily like what I think other people think of me within poker. Well, if you, okay. And if you had to bet, would you bet that you would be in poker 15 or 20 years from now? Or would you bet you'd be out? No, definitely not. Like, I think the rate, the amount I'm playing and stuff, like it's not sustainable at all. And I don't no. think it's like, like right now it's what I want to be doing. Next week, I just probably, I don't feel like playing. I'm just not going to play. But as of now, like, I feel like it. And so I am. As we can tell, Nick Airball thinks for the short term and not the long term. He jokes and wants to have fun and is no doubt entertaining, which we certainly need more of in poker. Yet, if Nick Airball hopes to regain some lost favor and turn critics into supporters, adapting his image to become more relatable and likable might just be the next critical move in his game. Is the majority of the money that you lost, that eight uh, million, was that money you won in poker? Yeah, some of it, a good amount. You're not busto, are you? No. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> still have chips. This guy, Nick Airball, is a real pinhead. The game is heads up, no limit, hold him. $100,000 minimum buy-in. But he takes so many fucking bathroom breaks, we can barely play 10 hands an hour. And I don't have that kind of time. But I just flopped a straight flush. So all I have to do is give him enough rope to hang himself. Now I'm going to act like I'm pondering a call, when all I'm really thinking about is Vegas and the fucking valleys. All right, you're 15, plus I have another 30. 33 to raise you. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go all in because I don't think you've got the royal. I already know before he slow rolls me. 